Hello again, gamers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Board Game Captain, and I'm here at Gen Con reporting and talking to... This is Matt Shoemaker, the designer of a new and upcoming game called Be Lives, We Live Only for Summer. Hi, Matt. Hi, how's it going? Very good. Thank you very much for being here with me today. Oh, I'm more than happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you and your lovely audience. Thank you. And yeah. why don't you tell us a little about Be Lives, We Live Only for Summer? Sure. So Be Lives is a medium to medium plus weight worker placement game that also uses a lot of resource management mechanics to it. Basically, you live in uh, a beehive and you play through a year of being in nature trying to survive. It is for one to four players. I have built in a fair number of solo mechanisms in the game so that you can play with it for scenarios, challenges, as well as a couple campaign modes. And uh, there's a tile laying mechanic with the game where you go out of your hive to go and interact with other players as well as what we call wild hives of the game, which are AI driven bees that you hmm. spin off in the game. Now, are the AI bees also in the multiplayer version, or are they only for the solo mode? No, they are definitely part of the multiplayer as well. They're an integral part of it. Huh. Uh, I'm a beekeeper by trade. Well, not by trade, but you know, by hobby. I've been doing it for eight years. I'm a librarian by trade. Um, and uh, one thing that bees do, the way they propagate, is through swarming. Mm. So one of the main ways to get points in the game is actually to swarm. You get five points for doing that in the spring season, three for doing it in the summer, and one in the fall. So the earlier you swarm, the better. So you should swarm early and swarm often. Mm. And you bring those out, and that's part of the way that you can kind of harass your opponents with those AI hives. Or you can also farm them for points and resources if you need to as well. So does it have a bit of a uh, area control mechanic as well as the tile laying? Or how does that work with the swarming? Yeah, so the swarming, they're not really yours. Once they leave, they are an independent entity. However, oh. they do kind of control the area around them based on the actions they can take. Okay. So there would be, I would say, very mild area control in this game. Okay. Um, the, the number one mechanic is definitely resource management, mm. and then worker placement followed that as well, um, both with deciding which actions you can take. There are eight actions in this game, so there's a fair number of choices that you have, um, and then choosing what you're going to do within your hive as well as outside of your hive. Now, I, I'm very intrigued by, I love worker placement. I love tile laying. Uh, any, all my viewers will know that I'm big fans of these mechanics. I'm actually quite excited for this game. When, when is this going to be, are you going to be able to buy this? When is this coming out? Yeah, so we're coming to Kickstarter on September 10th. Mm. So if you want to check that out, the best thing you can do is follow our newsletter. To sign up, just go to BeLivesGame.com. Sign up, and we'll hit you as soon as September 10th comes around to remind you to uh, sign up for the game. I'm also pretty active on Twitter. If you just follow at BeLivesGame, uh, and you can see what we're going on there. Or you can go to uh, my uh, newly formed publisher, uh, HitEmWithAShoe.com. That's E-M, not T-H-E-M. Uh, that there's a lot of info on there, and then hopefully if this goes well, we'll have more games coming out soon. Excellent. I'm going to put links to all of that in the description down below, so be sure to check those out. And I got to tell you, I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait till the, the Kickstarter goes live. So do you have some stuff in here to show us? Do you have some prototype components for the game? Sure. Let me just open this up for a second. All right, so the game will come with a nice bag, and in here we have several tiles. Tell me, tell me the bag is going to look like this. I hope so, but I'm, it's going to depend on the manufacturer. I need to show it. this to the camera. Yeah. Oh, man. I really hope that's what the I bag do is going to look is, like. This is a big hope for mine, but I, I can't promise it, unfortunately, at this time. So we have, here is a, a, a spring tile. We call it Bloom. We have a fall tile. Now, the tiles, I'm showing you the different ones because there are four types. And depending what season you're in, the better resources you can get. So there's a little strategy when it comes to how you're going to lay them out and where you're going to place them. And here's the final tile type. Our art is done by a local Philadelphian, uh, Alina Jassan. This is her first board game. But she has done uh, a lot of art in the Philadelphia area, particularly with uh, organizations like Bartram's Garden, which is one of the oldest gardens in America, which is why I went with her because she does a lot of just wild uh, nature art, plant art, things like that. So is the artwork final? Is this the final artwork we'll see in the game? There's going to be more artwork. Okay. So the cover and things are final. Mm. Some of the artwork on there is done. We're still tweaking the graphic design. And for instance, there's 27 cards in the game. Mm. Uh, right now, they're all using the same image, but we're going to have 27 different images for all the I arts. I see. I have to tell you, I really like the cover art that uh, your artist did for your game. It kind of reminds me of some of the art you used to see on the old Golden Books when I was a kid. It makes me get very uh, sure. nostalgic. And I love that. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> great. I, I'm happy with it. I, she, she followed the art direction well. We also, I don't know if you can see this, but we have little bee meeples that we are custom making yeah, here. Right up yep, go for it. As well. Those look great. Thank you. 
And then let me see what else I can dig out of here real quick. We have little hives. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Little beehives. Yep. These look fantastic. And then finally, you do have to track disease in the game as well. So we have this little guy. He's a varroa mite, and he represents how clean and healthy your hive is. So you have to manage that as well. You can't just go out and get resources. The more you do that, the dirtier your hive is going to get, and the more you got to take care of it, or you're going to have some bad consequences. Well, I, I got to tell you, I'm I'm even more excited than when I sat down with you. I'm I can't wait for this game. Well, check out all the links down below. And keep an eye out. Now, September 10th for the Kickstarter? That's right. September 10th. We're September launching. 10th. So now, are you ready for the lightning round questions? I'm totally ready. I'm going to help the viewers. I'm <laughs> going to help you guys get a better feel for who Matt is as a person with some lightning round fun questions. First, if you could spend an evening gaming with any historical figure, who would you choose and why? Uh, I think I would have to go with Hannibal Barca for that one. Ooh. I think he would be an excellent one. I'm so obviously, he's not played modern Euro games like this. I think mm. getting in, uh, into his strategic mind and just seeing how he played and uh, looked at those things would be a fascinating and possibly deadly experience. <laughs> That's yeah. a great answer. Yeah. <laughs> now, next one. What is one of your least favorite game mechanics that's still used in modern games? Yeah, with that one, I've got to go with bidding. I'm just mm. not a fan of bidding at all. I don't like it. I always, I don't know. I, I, I'm an anxious person. I've got some anxiety, so I'm always like, oh, I'm going to bid too much, too little, and then I just, I've always got regret with it. Just personally don't like it. Not a fan. Fair enough. Now, if you could buy a personal robot and download the personality and intellect of any game designer in the world into it so that you could then game with your robot, whose personality and intellect would you choose? Yeah. That's an easy one. I've definitely got to go with Uwe Rosenberg. Mm. Uh, I've, he's been a lot of inspiration for this game and other ones that I've worked on. Um, I mean, Feast for Odin is my all-time favorite game right now. I love going through that. I love going through Caverna, Agricola. Um, even his new puzzle games that he's got out, I think that would be a wonderful thing to just go through and pick that robot's brain and have uh, wonderful, wonderful game experiences. Now, what is one of the first games that hooked you into the tabletop gaming hobby? All right, so it's not a board game, but ultimately it was Dungeons & Dragons. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. So I started playing when I was eight years old. I was lucky to grow up in Wisconsin, <laughs> and uh, the which birthplace. was exactly the birthplace. So there was yes. D&D everywhere. My parents luckily caved when I begged them to let me get the, the red box of the game picked it up and that that really spiraled into there. Board game wise, um, the first one was probably Carcassonne that I really got into. Um, but before then I did a lot of war games and things like that. The first one being Star Wars Miniature Battles by mm. West End Games that uh, I really enjoyed a lot. And that's what made me fall in love with um, the physicality of the tabletop. Quick side question, do you still have that red box? I do, <laughs> I do, awesome. yeah. <laughs> now, what do you think is one of the most underused themes in modern gaming? Yeah, so I think this is underused because it's difficult to explore and also because I think it's important. And that is really just kind of social uh, welfare and justice themes. Hmm. I think just being able to kind of explore how people interact, inequality, things like that is a very interesting hmm. potential thing to explore and not something a lot of people have, have tackled. There's a lot of political games out there, but mm. they're all on kind of the equal playing field. I want to see some more asymmetrical political battle type situations, I think would be a great theme to explore. And finally, who's your favorite board game YouTuber whose name is a mix of a naval rank and their real name? Oh man, uh, I'm going to go with the board game captain. Yeah. Right answer. Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much again. Oh, thank you. And again, September 10th, look out for B Lives. We live only for summer on Kickstarter. And until next time, game on.